All right, so we just need to go right up to Kana's house. No. Maria Kane is in the west side of the map. Uh, Katerina Sabarov. I've got to get that name straight. Whoa, a dog immediately. What are the dog rules? The Bachelor campaign featured no dogs. Now I'm seeing a dog immediately in your campaign. Is it coming to me? Hey, buddy. The dogs are a weird mystery. Aside from the handful that are hostile to the Bachelor in that one specific quest scenario, they're mostly... Mi like, mystery units? They're like a blank slate? They just kinda hang out, and wander around, and that's it? I don't think they lead you to anything. It felt like that might be the case for at one point. I am as short as Aspidy. Maybe I'm shorter than Aspidy. Pins are sticking out of the pores of my skin. For a moment there, I thought I was suddenly in front of a mirror. You have the same bottomless eyes as me. That's because you and I are flesh from the same mother's flesh. Are you calling yourself my sister? I call myself Saba Otun. The children of Bodo call me Saba Uspdai which the locals here have already corrupted to Aspidy. What's your name? So it actually matters to you which name I'm going to use. Alright then, let's say I'm Clara. Clara, huh? Doesn't ring true. The name would better suit some holy martyr than a spawn of deities in grown in time. I'm not the spawn of evil. If that's the price of your kinship, then so much for sisters, Aspidy. Shabnakadir is tracing the streets like bacteria in a vein. Look at you refusing to use her real name and calling her Aspidy. Have you forgotten something? We've just discussed all there was to discuss. I don't remember that. When was it? Just now? Really? Yep, more people encountering copies of myself. The sister, or whatever she is. Will I be attacked? I'm so tiny, look how big the garbage can is. It's like it's ten feet tall. No, it's not. It's not a good number. Sore. Oh, how sore I am. My throat and my eyes are burning with sand. The ground underneath me is crumbling. I'd give anything for a drop of water. I'll give you any water- I'll give you all my water to- uh, to you and- And you, can you give me something to draw, stop the bleeding? I'm- I'm injured, you see. Yep, he'll trade for the- yep, that's all standard. I'm so tiny. Why do I sound so innocent? The way- th her dialogue is so weird compared to the aspity that I think I know. Sorry, the Clara, I think I know. She sounds so weirdly innocent and good-natured and everything, where Clara's just vicious and rude. Biting and condescending at every turn. Regardless of whether or not she has the ultimate goal of trying to save everyone without killing anyone. That happens when you hear her voice acting. You hear that cross-section of somebody that... It's like, she wants to save... She wants to save everyone, and she wants to, uh, no deaths. But she's, like, actively condescending to the other two people. Dog looks huge now. That's the one I'm used to. I wonder if she's gonna get frustrated or something over the course of the campaign. With the destructive types. Clara moves straight from Sabarov to... Block. 
which are actually rather similar and interesting. Oh, I got an herb. Were those always there? Were they there when I was the bachelor too? And I just didn't know how to find them. But yeah, Black, Block and Sabarov seem kind of similar in some ways. What? You are standing before Alexander Sabarov, one of the rulers of this town. You must be Clara, I suppose. Yes, that's right. Have I done something to make you angry? My wife, Katerina, said you had been seen at the cemetery. The late caretaker's daughter claims that you had crawled out of a fresh grave, the appearance of which could not be accounted for. Is this true? What? How could she possibly have talked to you already? I've got a firm hand. That was an interesting response. How did she talk to you already? I've got a firm hand. <laughs> do you know how it's do you know that it's dangerous for you to even go out in the street? Are you aware that the powerful Kane families put a bounty on your head? An envoy of theirs just left, and I promised them I'd ca help catch the criminal by all means possible. The criminal? The head of one of the ruling families died last night. His murderer is said to be a woman similar to you in appearance. The description largely matches. The common folk, blinded by local superstitions, are blaming a mythical, mystical creature spawned by the earth under mysterious circumstances at night. Is there anything you have to say to that, Clara? Who's been murdered? I know nothing. Simon Cain, the oldest and wisest of us, the spiritual mentor and founder of our community. Don't dodge the question, the charge is serious. But for my wife's firm faith in you, I would have handed you over to the Cains without a moment's hesitation. And you, do you suspect me too? I don't know why. But for some reason, I trust you. I get this strange feeling as though I have known you for a long time. But that makes me suspicious, Clara. Pointing as it does to the fact that you control an otherworldly power of some kind. I can't help myself. What if it's the force of truth? The truth speaking for itself? Why then are you being called a thief? I do believe larcenous skills are the exclusive domain of the wicked. Who's calling me a thief? That is something you'll have to ask my wife. She too possesses mysterious powers. Specifically, she has prophetic dreams. It has been proven over many years that these dreams do come true. They have been her main source of knowledge about you. I don't know why I'm yawning. I can't stop. It's driving me crazy. It's actually the other way around. My hands have the gift of healing. I can cure the most terrible diseases with my hands. I have cured cancer. I have even brought someone back from the dead once. Someone said I'd make a miracle happen. Indeed, you are a miracle worker. That makes you almost a saint. Yes, a status like that precludes accusations of murder and theft, but then explain to me the meaning of those coincidences. If not for my blind faith in my wife's words, I would have no doubt that you are an evil spirit, a spawn of the netherworld. And if you don't explain that mystery at once, I swear even Katerina's influence will not save you. Wait, I'll tell you. I have a twin sister, she looks exactly like me, is named the same, and wears the same clothes. I fear that she was the one who committed all those horrible crimes. Alright, have it your way. I accept this explanation, and I believe you. What is that long option? What in the world? 
It says, I, I just had to tell a lie for the first time in my life to invent a fictional sister and shift all those outrageous accusations to her. Strange, I could even utter the words, but I promise, I promise when it all clears up, I'll explain myself and undo that lie. Hmm. Every line of dialogue, I have the cha I have the choice to reinforce or denounce the existence of a sister of another Clara. And I can't entirely tell if she believes in the sister or not, or what, or if she's going back and forth like, uh, huh. I wonder if we're choosing whether she actually believes in the sister or not. Or if she- or if the sister is absolutely a lie, and never existed ever. And she just constantly is leaning on the idea. But even then, saying that she just had to tell a lie for the first time is weird, because I've said the sister existed several times already? Thank you for believing me. So what are you capable of, Clara? Tell me more about your miraculous abilities. I can cure various diseases using my hands. I know that already. Anything else? I can induce a hypnotic state in people, provided they consent, of course. Then they will answer any question truthfully. Enough. I need time to make up my mind. Now go outside, walk around the house, and you will get to my wife's side. Afterwards, come back to me. If your conversation yields no unpleasant surprises, I shall decide on your future from then on. From then on. All right, I'll do as you say. What a weird setup. It makes them feel like like fake spouses, the way their houses are split into two separate houses with no in, no interconnection. It's really odd. But as a backup thing, what I'm kind of wondering is. The, the main reason for that feature seems to be that it's a plague game. So like, I, it seems like these characters are segregated into separate chunks of house because the game needs to be able to make them individually sick and quarantined by executors. But if that's why it's like this, that makes it really weird in a few cases. Mainly Bad Grief, who has a bunch of people in the, in, with them, and, uh, Laura Ravel has several people in the house with them. And I think they can both get sick. Most people are all separate aside from them. Flat and Capella are in separate houses and so on. Uh... Even Vlad and Capella is a little less weird because at least it's like... They're not married, obviously. But these two are a couple. And they have separate houses but not separate houses. And I can only think it must be that way because of the whole plague mechanic. I'll let the good scholar examine the deadly powders. We'll put him to the test. The vision is becoming real. This doubtlessly is one of those two. Yet which one? I must be on my guard. May I come in? I'm cold. What? Come closer, Clara. Do you know that I, Katerina Sabrova, am a clairvoyant? I can commu- uh, you, you tell me. Don't you know if I know? Haha! <laughs> Turn that on you. <laughs> I can commune with the mysterious forces that permeate this land. Magic has no power over me. I can see into the future. Tell me, do you question my abilities? I have such abilities too. I'm not one to doubt the existence of supernatural powers. The visions. They're not all the same. Some of them are clear. Some are hazy. But a recent one was straightforward and livid. A vision of such power that even a materialist would not question its divine provenance. I had a vision of the chaos to come. Of the doom of all our creations of the earth swallowing our town. If it's all true, it's horrible. There was a prophecy of twin angels. It spoke of a harbinger of death, the imminent disaster incarnate. 
who is to come to the town, along with the holy healer who can perform miracles with their hands and deliver us from evil. Now I understand who is standing before me. Tell me, are you yourself aware of your calling? I am, I said so at once. Yes, that is correct. All that remains is to interpret that dream. A dream is always an allegory. Before I saw you, before I heard you speak, I had been thinking of other pairs of twins, Simon and Georgi Kane, Andre and Peter Stamaton, even those visitors, the Harrisbecks and the Bachelor, had seemed to be the harbingers of my dream, but now I see where the truth lies. So you believe me? I am fully convinced that the prophecy was referring to you. But others will need better proof of that. Do as my husband said, and prove that you are who I think you are, and we will stand by you, the ruling couple and the holy harbinger. What does that mean? It means that if you stand before our people in all your glory, fulfill your destiny, and don't abandon us afterwards, we will adopt you as our daughter. When I die, I will pass on to you the power of the spirit, and your heart's chosen one will inherit the power of the sword from my husband. Why are you speaking as if you were reciting a psalm? Because there are no word, no other words to speak properly of such things. And as for you, obedience will suit you much better than waywardness at this time. You are in too questionable a position, and it is beyond my power to change that on my own. I fear nothing. My conscience is clear. Now... Go to Alexander. Be brave. No matter what he asks of you, you have nothing to be afraid of, for I see that you are the true harbinger. Such things can neither be changed nor hidden from me. Time has proven that I do not make mistakes. Fear nothing, and return triumphant. All right, I'm going. I'll let the good scholar examine the deadly powders. We'll put him to the test. Now look here. Since you are holding the threads of life in your wondrous hands, I'm going to entrust you with several people. They are all wicked people. Their souls are as black as soot. Each of them is either an avowed evildoer or hiding a sinister secret. You must take care of them. I don't understand taking care of evildoers. If you are a kind angel, a holy miracle worker sent to us from heaven, who else but you could discern some, e some virtue inside their lost souls? Convert them, redeem them, forgive them. But that is not the reason I am asking you to take care of them. There are many in our town who need to be purified. There are many worse villains than these, and yet these ones are special. Special to you, Clara. Why? Trust me, I know. I can see into the future. The sinners who I will now name will be of use to you in due time. In what way, I do not know. But I know that they will be. The likelihood is fairly great. So make sure that they live, unless you should see yourself, it more fit that they die. In this, is this agreed? Agreed, if I'm able to do what that is. And now hear me. All that I have told you is between you and I alone. Don't say a word about anything. Most importantly, keep it from my husband. I thought you had no secrets from each other. He is not his own master. He is a ruler, a man of duty. Two men 
are living inside him. It will drive him insane to find out that I have charged you with taking care of those who his duty dictates he should suspect, indict, and execute. He trusts my premonitions too much. But what am I to do then? You can never misstep, for every action you take is governed by supreme justice. Decide as your nature tells you. Listen to your feelings. I can't promise you anything, but I'll be mindful of your request. May I have a look at them? Right, we're off to a big start already. <laughs> Whatever happens, these people must live. Their fates are bound to mine. They may hold the keys to my victory in their hands. Alright, we have Bad Grief, Stanislav Rubin, Aspidy, Yulia, Anna, Alexander, Katerina, Lara, and the Foreman. Oh boy. That's a list. <laughs> That's quite a list. Okay. The first three are kind of obvious. We have the, we have the guy that does the... Uh, the illegal operation. We have the guy that runs an illegal operation. We have Aspity, who just it exists to make people angry. Those ones are a little odder. Yulia and Anna. Isn't Yulia a heretic, basically? Anna's, an, Anna's a liar, isn't she? And Yulia's a heretic or one of science. There's Lara, who runs the house. I think she had a dark secret, though, of some kind. The two people in, the, in this house. Interesting that they include themselves in the list, isn't it? And then the foreman who, yeah, he's full of lies and bullshit and he probably killed... I think we confirmed that he killed, uh, uh, Artemis' de uh, father. The wheel of my fortune has touched me in a dream. I feel that you were sent to us by destiny itself. Who are mistresses? Women who weave time into threads of power. They let power go through them, and then let the threads back out. Even as men are building a town from wood and stone, the mistresses weave its soul from intangible substances. The joys and the sorrows, the epiphanies and the lethargies, the feelings, the inspirations. That is the yarn that the mistresses spin. How did they appear? There was a time when the head of each of the three families brought into his house a woman of supernatural powers. The first one was Victor Kane, Simon and Georgie's brother. He had lived in the capital when he was very young. Matters concerning the running of his estate had been the pretext for his leaving, but in truth, he was attracted by something entirely different. This is weird to me. They talk about these mistresses like it's a long-running tradition. Like it has history. But Victor was the first one to do it? But then we remember that the Canes have unnaturally long lives? Well, I'm not sure if that's true about other characters too, or just the Canes. But either way, it's still one lifetime of theirs at the very least. Aren't the Canes only a couple hundred years old at the oldest? Maybe. Hmm. I guess that could make it more of a tradition. Namely? I'm not in a position to tell you at this point. Because of the connections he had made in those circles, he be became acquainted with one Nina Lilich, a bright, refined, devilish aristocrat who fell for Victor for some reason, and he brought her here in this faraway corner of the steppe. And what happened then? It turned out then that Nina was harboring plans concerning this place, and the Cain's elders, Georgi and Simon, had certainly impressed her. To put it briefly, Nina became the ruler of this land. I was only, what, 15 at the time. Yes, Nina died 11 years ago. So you were 15 years old, so Nina's significantly older than you, but how old are you if Victor was bringing her in? 
Unless he was already very old beforehand. Where did her power lie? It is impossible to describe. It is beyond the mind to grasp. She emanated a demonic passion. She inspired those around her and radiated the faith in the limitlessness of human capacities. Those who were near her were blinded by that faith. She was the source of many a horrific and brilliant idea. Then Victoria came along. Was she like that too? No. She was completely different. For Nina, human lives were tools, while Victoria protected them. I think that was why Big Vlad Ogimsky had brought her here. She had married her. He had married her a long, a long time ago. But she and their son, Vlad the Younger, who was very small at the time, used to live far away, somewhere in the eastern region. And the third one? Who was the third mistress? The third one, the youngest mistress in the town, and the only one as of now, is myself, the only mistress without an heiress. Everything has its limits in this world. Everything is balanced. Woe is me. But you and I will discuss that later. Fine, as you wish. And so the Kane one was replaced by Maria. Victoria was replaced by Capella. Who I think is also named Victoria. I need morphine. The double names mess with me, the people that have two names. But you... Don't have an heir yet, which might be me. But the heir to the earth is supposed to... Matchmakers. The mistress of the earth heir is supposed to be murky, potentially. So maybe... This gets confusing. But also the... The... Uh, the mistresses all have mystical powers. What was that animation she just what? did? The mistresses have mystical powers. They have heirs that take on their powers? I'm just curious about that detail. How did they know that going into this? They seem to know that people will inherit the powers, but how do you know that if it's if this if it's all new? I'm continually surprised by the idea that they're the first generation of mistresses, I guess. It's not some long run not some long running uh, tradition that's gone for generations. Sounds like this is the first time the transition's ever happened. Neither the sun nor death can be looked at without winking. Who said that? Indeed, you do look more like a messenger from above than a spawn of the earth. Katarina's told me her dreams. It all fits. She believes I'm a messenger from above. All right. My wife is clairvoyant, but I am not. I need something to make sure that you are exactly who you claim to be. I'm going to give you a few tasks. Let your actions prove that your hands have power over people's lives. And your words over their minds. I'm ready. I have nothing to worry about. I have received reports of a fight at the station this morning. Several men were killed. Several more maimed. I dispatched two loyal men there. They will tell you where the dead and wounded have been carried off. See if anything can be done. But it could be dangerous. If you are truly the prophesied, the prophesied messenger from above, then you have nothing to fear. Nothing will harm you. The murderer has fled. The whole town is searching for them. Wherever they are now, that place is far from the station. Go, and fear nothing. And what if I don't succeed this time? After all, I can't control this power, it's coming from beyond. If not this time, then another time. Heal a man by nightfall for me. If the presence... In the presence of a witness, or preferably witnesses. This will strengthen our position. I will then have legitimate grounds for protecting you against the Cain's wrath. 
All right, I'll do everything as you say. So we need to go heal the person that Artemy attacked. Your coming is a sign. You are a link in a whole chain of mysterious coincidences. That's interesting. That could indicate Clara resenting Artemy on day one if my Artemy cured that guy and so that Clara didn't have to deal with it. Uh, but then Clara had to resort to other measures to, in her desperation to prove her worth so that Sabarov could have the claim to protect her against the others. So Artemy healing that guy and saving him when, they get, when, they, when he crawled his way to Grace actually made li Clara's life harder. As a result, I'm a little baby. The door handles are taller than me. Oh my goodness. This would be a trip to play in VR. Just the bizarre height difference to experience. Ah. I've been six feet tall for like half my life at this point, so. Moments of chances to simulate shortness are like a really odd moment for me.